So now in this lecture, I am going to talk about gradient drift. So in the earlier lecture, I talk about this expression for uh, divergence of magnetic field. And uh, I talk about these three terms, diagonal terms. Now, if now I consider that if these two terms are non-vanishing, means if they do not vanish, then how they affect the result? Then this leads to the drift in certain direction. And uh, corresponding to that, we are going to calculate the drift velocity because of these two gradient terms. So let us proceed. Now consider these two terms, curly Vz over curly x and curly Vz over curly y of the tensor term. And let us assume that, that these two terms do not vanish and choose coordinate system such that curly Vz over curly X is not equal to zero and curly Vz over curly Y is equal to zero. We have chosen coordinate system such a manner and if we follow this, then we will choose coordinate system Say it is y axis, it is x axis, and it is z axis, and this is field is along z axis, and vz is taken as equal to v, and here it field gradient is along this direction because this term is non zero and there is no field gradient, so the force will act along this direction, so that means a charged particle. It starts following this path. Right in this way. So let us consider two points one and two. The time say it is at time t one and it is at time t two. And this is known as gradient drift. This is known as gradient drift. Now the force is acting along y-axis, sorry, a drift is along this direction, but the force because of this field is along x-direction. So the force acting on uh, along x-direction, it can be written as E by C and the velocity is along y-axis and the magnetic field along z-axis. That's what we have chosen. So this is the expression for uh, force acting along x direction. Now I can expand this Vz dex along uh, using Taylor series. So applying Taylor series over this Taylor series expansion. That means we know the value of Vz that is equal to zero. So at x, how it can be calculated using Taylor series. So means f of x can be written as E by C V by Vz naught plus x curly V over curly X. 
x is equal to 0 plus and so on. So this is the Taylor expansion of this. So this is nearly equal to m mass of the charged particle vx dot is equal to e by c v by this is nearly equal to vz naught plus x curly vz over curly x at zero So now if I integrate this f of x from t1 to t2 and its integral comes out to be 0 as net velocity along x direction, no net velocity, it's moving, but net velocity will be 0. So using that word I can say that this must be equal to 0. So if it is equal to 0, then what can we do? Applying this value here means I have to substitute this value in this integral. Then what I am getting? The integral will become, it is from T1 to T2, E by C vy vz plus x curly vz over curly x dt it must be equal to 0 and this is t1 to t2 vy vz dt it is equal to minus t1 to t2 integral it is x p y curly v z over curly x into dt now let us assume that the field is slowly varying and so over one larmer period the field is constant over one larmer period or or orbit field is constant is a definition of slowly varying magnetic field so that means curly v z over curly x can be written as curly v over curly x over 1 Larmer orbit and V is also constant for this Larmer period. So if I use this in this case, that means this BZ can be replaced by B, this is replaced by B and this can be taken outside this integral. So if I do this then this V integral T1 to T2 V by DT must be equal to negative of and this can also be taken outside. So curly V by curly X and integral from T1 to T2 it is X V by DT and this V can be taken towards another side. If I do that T1 to T2 V by DT is equal to minus 1 upon B curly V over curly X in integral from T1 to T2 X V by DT and this V by is nothing but derivative of Y with respect to T. This will cancel out minus 1 over V curly V over curly X and integral from because I am taking a one contour or one orbit so it's a closed integral 
x d y y d t into d t. This will cancel out. <coughs> so it is delta y because it is changing from here to here. So this change is delta y. From t1 to t2 because this is one point, this is two point, this is t1 and t2. So it is delta y is equal to minus one over b curly v over curly x and integral x dy. And it is nothing but it is the this is the area. So this is basically pi a square. So that means delta y. Which I am getting, delta y is equal to minus one by v curly v over curly x in pi a square. Now drift velocity v t is equal to delta y over delta t is equal to one by v curly v over curly x. Taking its magnitude simply. So it is pi a square, and it is delta t. One over delta t. So delta t is equal to two pi by omega c. So therefore, one over delta t is equal to omega c over two pi. That's what we are using here. So it is one upon b curly b over curly x pi a square omega c over two pi. Pi will cancel out with it. So it is one by b. Curly b over curly x a square by two omega c. So it is one over b curly b over curly x. Now since we know that magnetic moment is equal to e r l square is a Larmor radius two c omega c. So that means r l square by Two omega c is nothing but is equal to mu c upon e. So this is replaced by this one. So it is mu c over e. So therefore, b g is equal to gradient velocity is equal to c by e mu. One by b curly b over curly x, and in general form, to express this in general form, let us assume that e three is equal to b by b. It is the unit vector. Along the direction of field, so therefore, the general expression will reduces to c over e mu e three cross del b. So this is the expression for gradient drift or drift velocity. Or simply, we can say that for the drift velocity. So with this is the end of this article, and in the next article, I am going to talk about curvature drift. So thanks for watching.